on my ooh, thank you, Annie. It's 12.02 on my, I keep wanting to say calculator, clock, great. And <laughs> we should go ahead and get started. Um, thank you. Thank you for attending. Um, I hope that this can be um, a useful service to learn about for uh, SSPs, for harm reduction programs, for social service providers in your networks. Um, so please feel welcome to share this information around um, after receiving it. But um, we're going to learn a little bit about Safe Stays today. Uh, my name is Christine Rodriguez. I work at AIDS United, um, who's uh, mission, if you're unfamiliar with us, is to end the domestic HIV epidemic. We do that through capacity building, strategic grant making, and policy advocacy is our three main pillars. And it's a pleasure um, to have Ananya here with us today, who I will uh, let introduce uh, herself. Would you Would you like to introduce yourself, Ananya? Sure. Thank you, Christine. Yeah. Um, my name is Ananya Gemwant. I am a part of the Safe Stays team. Um, I started working at Safe Stays earlier this year, and today actually marks our one-year anniversary, so I'm very excited to be uh, talking about Safe Stays with you all today. Um, thank you so much for inviting me and for joining this webinar today. Yeah, congrats. Um, I love that. This has been um, a need, I think, in social service provision for a really long time, so I'm really excited that Safe Stays exists. Um, could we just uh, go to the next slide, do a little housekeeping? Um, so Safe Stays by RelaShare, um, we're going to hear more about this, but hoteling solutions for social service providers, and I think um, the features that I'm really excited about, aside from everything you see here, is that you can um, use an alias for your guests so they don't have to use their real name when they book, um, no credit card and no ID from either of you, which uh, is a huge barrier for folks. Um, so we'll hear more about all those features um, when Ananya uh, gives her presentation next. Um, so just introductions, we're gonna do the demo, Q&A. Um, everyone is probably muted right now. We'll be recording the presentation. We are recording right now, but we'll stop for questions. Um, and you can pop questions anytime in the chat, in the Q&A box. Um, just let us know, let us know what you're curious about. Uh, next slide. Okay, this is the website if you'd like to sort of poke around on it on your own as well. Um, and we'll be we'll be sharing this out later. Um, I think that's good. Annie, if you want to stop sharing so that Ananya can and um, yeah, we can just kick off this demo. Awesome. Sounds good. Give me one moment. Great. I'm going to um, go off camera so I'm not distracting. Okay. Awesome. Are folks able to see my screen all right? Yes. All right, yes. Okay, yes. I'm going to take that as a yes. Awesome. Well, so as Christine mentioned, I'm here um, from the Safe Stays by Real Share program. We are a hotel booking website for social service providers. So as Christine mentioned, the way that social service providers have been booking hotel stays for their clients um, just isn't working, right? There's not a simple way to secure safe, anonymous, emergency, or transitional hotel reservations for clients. And those clients can span from survivors of domestic violence, human trafficking, survivors of crime, um, sexual assault, folks who are migrants, refugees, all sorts of different communities. And in fact, you know, like this, the system has never worked, right? Organizations usually have one hotel option available, if any, because of a direct relationship that they may have with a hotel manager. Advocates have to drive to hotels 24 hours a day to personally check clients in, most of the time having to put down their own personal and credit cards and using their IDs. And then on top of that, also running into ID and credit card issues on the part of the survivor, which makes, you know, checking in a client usually next to impossible. So our solution to this is Safe Stays. So we are the first and only national alias approved hotel booking platform for social service providers. We work with a number of hotel chains, including Choice Hotels, Extended Stay America, Hilton, Wyndham, Radisson Hotels, and we have negotiated the proprietary alias approved check-in agreement. 
The alias approved check-in agreement is an agreement wherein you, the client agency, is able to book a stay for a survivor without having to use their name or ID or credit card. Some of the unique program features of safe stays is that there is no credit card required, not neither for the survivor nor for you at the agency. Um, and the way that we do that is, is uh, in terms of the billing is that we have consolidated billing. So when an agency books a stay with us, um, if an agency is to book multiple stays with us in one month, instead of getting separate invoices for each of those stays, you get one consolidated invoice at the end of the month that you're able to pay via um, ACH bank transfer um, or, you know, via check. And that way it's consolidated for you and you're able to spend more time providing direct service to survivors as opposed to running around after invoices. You're also able to check in clients without an ID and no credit card for them. Um, when you make a reservation for a client, you do so using our unique portal, which I will show you during our live demonstration. And as soon as you make that reservation, an email is sent to our 24-7 team who calls the hotel and makes sure the hotel understands all the details of the reservation before your client gets to the hotel. So, for example, um, you know, it's about 12-something right now, East Coast time, if you were to make a reservation at 1230 um, for tonight, the 16th until tomorrow, the 17th. As soon as you make that reservation, you will get an email that is sent to you and to our 24 17 with the details of the stay. Then somebody from our 24 17 will say, all right, we're contacting the hotel now. Then they'll contact the hotel and make sure that especially that the hotel understands how billing is going to work since a credit card will not be presented at check-in. And then our 24 7 team gets back to you in about 20 to 30 minutes after you've initially made the reservation to let you know that all the details of the reservation have been confirmed with the hotel and your client can make their way over to the hotel now. So I'm going to take a moment now to um, show you what it looks like to actually book a stay for somebody using our site. Just one moment. So this is our website. Um, this is our this is our portal. Um, this is what the agencies that we have partnered with, which at this point is 200 plus agencies and counting, have access to. Um, you can be sitting in Houston and book a stay for somebody in Portland, uh, Maine, or Oregon. Um, you can be at, like in one county and book for somebody in a different county. You're able to book for somebody at anywhere in the United States. You'll see that our system defaults to a one night stay. You can make this the length of time that you would like. For our purposes, I'll just demonstrate with a um, two day stay. Is there a, would somebody be able to go off mute and just say a zip code or an area or a county that they'd like to look at? All right, 75081. 75081, thank you. So when you search for a location, the blue pin will show you where you are searching, and then our system will show you everything that is in a 50 mile radius of wherever you are searching. The red and the green markers are hotels. Green hotels are alias approved hotels, and red hotels are not. What that means practically is that if you have a client who does not have access to their ID, or they don't feel comfortable showing their ID, um, or for some other reason using their ID is not an option for them, then you can go ahead and book them at any of the alias approved hotels where you will not be required to show an ID or to use a credit card. At the red hotels, you will be required to show an ID, but you still will not be required to use a credit card. Um, the reason for that is a lot of times hotels have not finished filling out their paperwork with us in order to offer these alias approved hotels. And you can scroll and you'll be able to see which ones are alias approved. You can also have our system only show you alias approved hotels. Um, our system defaults to sorting by distance from location. You can also sort it by uh, price. So for our purposes, I'm going to just look at alias approved hotels. And let's look at this one, for example, this extended stay America in Greenville. So you'd click on view available rates. 
And you see the different types of rooms that are available. So this one's a studio one queen bed, this one's studio two full bed. And you go ahead and click book now on the room that's best for your client. So this is what will pop up. It'll have the name of the place you're staying, uh, your client is staying, their phone number, the details of the, of the length of stay, the details of the room and the cancellation policy. So here you'd say, yes, the guest is using the alias name and therefore no, they don't have a government issued ID. Our system will create a name for you, but if you don't like it, you can generate new alias name. Um, the next box is a customer ID. This is optional. It's for your agency's internal use only. Um, so you don't need to use it, but the way that many agencies do use that is um, to put in, for example, a case management number. If you, for example, have a case management software and have ID numbers for everyone you work with, then you could put that in. That's especially helpful if you're booking a lot of alias approved stays because, you know, maybe at the end of the month, you won't remember who Bertha Rodriguez is. Um, but then if you have the customer ID number, then you know who that person was. Um, another thing that can be helpful in this box is if, for example, you're working with different grants and you have different, or, or if not grants, but you have different um, sources of funding, let's say you have source A, source B, source C of funding, you could put that in first and then the case number or client number, as it were. So that way, not only do you know who this person is when you get your invoice, but you also know what pot of money the stay is being funded through just to help you know, make it a little bit easier for you at the end of the month when you're dealing with reconciliation. The next box is an agency contact person. So this is whomever is uh, the, the advocate who is making this booking and their email and phone number. So our 24 seven team provides all updates regarding reservations via email, but it's helpful to have a phone number in case of any escalations. The next thing is how many adults will be in the room and how many children, that's folks under 18. Um, we cannot book rooms for people who are under 18 by themselves. Uh, so that's something to also keep in mind. And the next thing is an expected check-in time. So this hotel uh, has a check-in time of 4 p.m., um, but you can request an early check-in. So let's say, for example, you'd like to request an early check-in of 1.30. Um, when you make the reservation, our 24-7 team will call the hotel, and when they're confirming the details of the reservation, they'll also see if the hotel is able to honor that early check-in request. And whether the answer is, yep, we can do 130, that's great, or sorry, we can't do 130, but uh, we can do 230, or no, sorry, we were fully booked last night, we can only do 4 p.m., whatever that answer is, that information is passed back to you, so you can work with your client to decide the best course of action. It's also important to note that these early check-in requests are exactly that, requests. Um, if the hotel is unable to honor it, um, then you will have to check in, your client will have to check in at the agreed upon time. That's why it's also important to make sure that you hear back from our 24-17 before you send your client to the hotel. You'd also then include if there's any pets and it'll tell you if there's a fee, if there's a fee for the pet, any parking spots, and if there's a fee for the parking spots. And then you'll see the reservation rate, taxes, fees, total price. The last box is the notes box, and this is any information that you'd like forwarded to the front desk of the hotel. Um, the hotel does not know what organization is sending this person. The hotel does not know um, why this person is in the hotel, and the hotel doesn't need to know any of that. What the hotel knows is that this is someone who's coming through the Safe States program, so it is somebody who is in crisis, um, and you don't need to provide any further details. However, you can provide details that you think would be helpful for getting your guests checked in. So for example, um, if your client is a monolingual Spanish speaker, you could note that if your client requires a room on the ground floor because of accessibility purposes, you could note that, things like that. Then you'd go ahead and click confirm, which I'm not going to do because it would um, make this reservation. But we'd made this reservation for two nights, right? Tonight till Thursday, the 18th. Now, let's say it's Wednesday night or Thursday morning and you're speaking with your client. The two of you decide that they actually need to stay in their hotel longer. What you would do is you would navigate over here to hotel reservations. And this is a one-stop shop, if you will, for managing all your reservations, the ones that are ongoing, the ones that have been completed, the ones that have been canceled. So let's say that Betty Boop is your client and you need to extend her stay. You'd go to view and extend reservation. And when you extend a reservation, you can ask for the number of additional nights you need. So let's say six, for example, 
and apologies for these dates. This is my um, demonstration one, so, the, so it's a bit, um, it's not correct. Um, and when you search for additional nights, um, it will show you uh, the same type of room that you had already booked, right? So in this case, a one queen bed non-smoking. You'll then search for the rates and then the rates will probably be quite similar to what you, um, the rates that you had had for the original reservation and you would confirm your request for the extension. The same way that extension goes toward 2417, they call the hotel, the hotel provides any useful information to 2417 and then they relay it back to you. Usually in the case of extension, it's just that the client needs to go downstairs to update their keys. You can also cancel a reservation entirely if it's before the check-in time of the first day, request an early checkout. Um, and so basically anything that you need to do with regards to um, making changes to a reservation happens from in here. And if you ever have any questions or if there's something urgent regarding a reservation, you can email our 24-7 team right here. And you'll have your name, your email, and you can say your reference number, the guest name, and say whatever the issue is. Like, for example, that you're trying to extend, but the hotel says it's all sold out, or that it's not letting you, um, you know, make a certain type of modification to the reservation. Um, the last but not least, there are three different places where you're able to see what you, how, how much you're getting billed. Obviously, one is at the end of the month, the end of the month invoice. Um, but the other place, the other second place is in here. You scroll to the bottom and you're able to see the reservation, tax fees, and the total rate for each one of your stays. And the third place is in the individual confirmation emails you receive for each reservation that also has that breakdown of reservation rate, taxes, fees, and totals. So I'm going to take a step back, stop sharing my screen, and see if folks have any questions at this point after I've provided a bit of an overview about safe stays <clears throat> and shown you what our platform looks like, sorry. I'm wondering, um, Ananya, before we stop the recording, if you would be able to share about the gift card program that you told me about. Oh, yes, I'm so sorry. Um, no, I thank you. I'm excited by the live demonstration. So um, our gift card program is something that we have um, for our partner agencies. So agencies that are looking to fundraise um, and and basically augment the funds that they have for hotel stays are able to create, <laughs> so sorry, are able to create a page on our gift card site where they can direct donors to. So donors can directly fund the, the stays on safe stays. So just one moment, I will give you, I will show you what that looks like. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I think part of the beauty of this system is that um, if I'm if I'm right, Ananya, mm -hmm. agencies can sign up for free without obligation and just use it sort of whenever uh, whenever it's needed. Certainly. So I'm just going to show that really quickly. I don't know if you're able to see my screen. It looks black right now. Okay, well, then never mind. Um, basically, yes, you there's a website on there's a page on our website where you can see what it looks like for for organizations to sign up. And if you go now, you'll see some of the partner agencies that we have that we work with right now, who chose to make <coughs> who chose to make a gift card page where they're able to direct donors to. It is also important to note that we are a completely free to use service. Um, so there is no um, annual minimum booking. Um, there's no like subscription fee. If you were to create an account with us today on August 16th and not make a reservation until um, November 16th, then you will not get charged until December, at which point you'll be charged for all of your stays in November. But there's not a line item for using Reloshare or for using safe stays. Well, thank you so much. Um, are we ready for questions? I want to make sure we cut the recording off for those. 